high on the woodpecker today. I install the wheels and make the upper blade guide. In my last episode, I managed to finish the top wheel mount. Now, I need to take care of the bottom one. <laughs> this one is much easier. I begin by cutting a glue up I made to the size of the bottom wheel mount. Then I can mark and drill a hole for the wheel shaft. When this hole is done, I drill the four mounting holes. For this block, I'm going to use long 15 cm screws. I screw them up until they stick just a little bit and mark the frame. After drilling some pilot holes, I can screw the block in place. But this is not that easy. The screws are so long that I have to use several tools. Then I can make the back support. It will be screwed right here. And I've already laid down the screws position. I just need to drill them. Then I have to drill the shaft's hole. Before going any further, I need to take care of the wheels. First of all, I check if they're balanced. I can see that the upper wheel is a little heavy under my star. I make a mark and remove some wood. Now it's perfect. But when I check the bottom wheel, <laughs> to my big surprise, it's perfect as is. Now I need to drill a hole in the center of each shaft, so I'll be able to lock the wheels in place. To do so, I turn my drill table in line with the drill press and drill a hole in the center of both shafts. Then I tap each one. This will be perfect. To protect the wheel and the blade, I'll put a bicycle inner tube around the wheel. The first thing I have to do is cut it along its inside edge. Then I have to clean the rubber with hot water and soap. After drying it, I'm able to stretch it on the wheel. I put the wheel and the tube inside the vise and put the tube over the top. After clamping the top, I can stretch the sides. Okay, now I need to make some springs to apply pressure on the blade. So I cut two thin pieces of maple and drill a hole in their center. I also drill a hole in a block of wood. This will lift the crank and also distribute the pressure on the wood springs. Now I can put it all on the saw. It's perfect, but I forgot to install the wheel shaft. Now I can put it back on the saw with the wheel. I do the same thing for the bottom wheel. Now I can put the blade in place. But this <laughs> doesn't work at all. The blade always wanders on the front 
even when I try to make some adjustments. When I check if both wheels are aligned, I can see that they're not. So I unscrew the bottom wheel mount block and add a shim in front. <laughs> but this doesn't work. My shim is too thick. I made a thinner one and after reassembling it, it's perfect. Now I can screw the back support, but I only use two screws. And I can try my first spin. <laughs> this is an exciting moment. Now that I know it's working great, I mark the length of bolt shafts and cut them. Then, just like before, I drill some holes for the locking bolts and tap them. Now I can reassemble it. But before trying to cut anything with it, I want some blade guides. I begin by making the block, which will hold the guide themselves. Then I cut a center groove. After drilling the two mounting holes, I use the pattern to mark the placement of the holes of the guide block holder and drill them. The holes are smaller than the bolt I'm going to use. So now I can tap the wood. Now I can screw the screw directly inside the wood. But to hold the guide in place, I need some metal plates. For that, I'm going to use the same flat bar I used before. So after cleaning the rust, I mark and cut the metal. Then I grind the plates to their right size. To do so, I have to go back inside my old shop <laughs> because I haven't moved the grinder yet. When I'm done, I drill the holes. Now it's time to make the actual guide. For that, I'm going to use this piece of wood. I have no clue which pieces it is, but it's the hardest wood I have at home. This is one piece left from the step stool I have at the cottage. The first thing I do is to make sure I have at least one straight edge. Then I can cut all the blade guides. And this is what it looks like when I'm done. But I also need to make the support on which this will be screwed. After cutting it to the right dimension, I cut the front notch. Then I can mark and cut the slot for its forward adjustment. To do so, I make a series of holes on the drill press. Then I drill a hole for the carriage bolt that will hold the truss bearing. After tapping the hole, I can cut a slot on top so the truss bearing can be locked. Then using the block I made earlier, I find the screws placements and drill them. <laughs> Just after screwing the block in place, I noticed that I forgot to drill a big hole for the truss bearing back nut. Okay, now I need to put the truss bearing in place, <laughs> but I have nothing to make this hole smaller. So I'm going to turn a maple bushing.
Before going any further, I modify a carriage bolt. I begin by cutting a slot on top. Then I file a washer hole square to fit the carriage bolt. After cutting a piece of my bushing, I can assemble the truss bearing. Now I'm ready to make the guide bar which will hold all this together. I begin by cutting a piece of maple. Then I cut the bottom notch. I need to clean the saw blade marks. I also have another small notch to do in front of the guide bar. Now I can mark the placement of the hole for the guide by pushing the guide up to the bar and with a drill bit, I make a mark at the front of the slot. The hole is finished on the drill press. Now I need to take care of the recess for the T-bolt that I'm going to use there. This is perfect. And this is how everything will fit together. But the guide bar is not finished yet. I need to cut a big chamfer in front. This will keep the guide bar firmly clamped to the frame. <laughs> Speaking of the frame, I need to figure the placement of this guide bar on it. I begin by marking the position of the blade on the frame. Then with the guide assembled, I figure the distance I have to cut left up to this mark. For my setup, is 22 millimeters. Now that I know where to cut, I need to know the depth. With a thin blade, I measure the distance from the teeth to the frame. Then I measure from the tip of the guide to the back of the guide. I remove from this measurement my last one and I can mark the depth of the cut. But I still check if I'm not making a big mistake by laying a piece of wood on the blade and by checking my line. Since I'm confident this will work, I remove the wheels and cut the frame. I make sure my first cut is at the right place and straight. Then I make a series of cuts. But for those, they are all over the place. Next, I remove the waste wood and clean the bottom. When I'm done, I check with the guide bar and it's perfect. But I don't take any chances, so I also check it with a square. Now I can mark what I need to remove on the frame and turn it around. I transfer my mark on the back and cut the excess. I need to finish the cut by hand. Then I make the cut nice and smooth. I take the advantage of the fact that the lower shaft back support is removed to trace a nicer shape and cut it. Then I put it back in place. I managed to do a lot of work in this episode, but if you're interested in seeing more, you'll have to come back to the woodpecker.